So this right here, I commonly see people wondering what exactly this little like jack is for. So, and, and it might be kind of hard to see with the lights on, so I'll turn them off there. But essentially, actually, you know what? I will just show you. So essentially what you need is your little um, adapter here. Then get your favorite uh, pair of headphones, plug in your headphones, and then you just plug it right on in there and just take a listen. Yeah, kind of faint sounds of a campfire crackling and maybe even a beer can opening. Or not. No, that's not what that's for? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. Hey, how's it going, Papa Camper family? Welcome inside our 2008 Jayco Select 12HW. So this video, unlike that intro, is hopefully going to be uh, uh, chock full of some good information from you got for you guys. Um, essentially, this is going to be a part two of the exterior walkthrough of pop up campers. So in that video, we did you know everything on the exterior of a pop up camper, what you might commonly see. Whereas now, and you guys asked for it, um, I asked you if we wanted to see a video and a lot of you said you did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through our pop-up camper here, show you everything that's inside, all of its features, all of its amenities, and things that you might be like, what is that thing and what is its purpose in my pop-up? So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first things first, let me dispel any myths I may have uh, perpetuated. So what this little jack is, on commonly on the uh, lights that you can see right there as well as actually let me flip you around here as well as these those are 12 volt I guess auxiliary power sources and commonly what you're gonna plug into those are where did I put it are these guys right here this is gonna be a light and fan combo um, I think they also make just lights if you don't want the fan but let me show you here. What you do is you come over to your jack and plug in your fan light combo. And that way, then this light and fan will also get uh, some power from you know your existing 12 volt lines that are running through your camper. So let me uh, set that up and I'll kind of show you how that works. So as you can see, I got the fan light combo set up. And of course there's a light and there's a fan. And once again, that just runs all the way back into there. And then, like I said before, if you see something like this as well, exact same thing. This one is, of course, uh, to hang a fan or a light off of um, our uh, slide out shepherd's hook so we can have light uh, right at our dining room. So don't plug your headphones into there. Next up, and this is the second most common th thing I see questions about, and that is what are these meant for? Now, I guess it, it, in, in its form, it's kind of a, a self-explanatory, but essentially what this is, it is a hanging rack. Now, keep in mind, and especially for ours, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe half inch screws holding this in through the aluminum and into the, um, uh, I guess, uh, insulation that's in the roof. So what I'm getting at with that is that these cannot hold too much weight. Now, given that ours is kind of above our shower right here, I like to use this to hold maybe a towel, maybe two, if it's you know not too wet, not too heavy. But essentially, if you have one of these perhaps over your kitchen or something, um, there might be some sort of organizer that comes with. All I'm saying is just don't put too much weight into it or weight on whatever you're hanging on it because those screws really don't go too far into your roof. So this is this can hang towels, this can hang clothes, this can uh, hang baskets, things of that nature, but just don't put too much weight on them. All right, next up we have our air conditioner. This is of course a rooftop air conditioner and it requires you to be plugged into shore power to operate. Now uh, actually right over here you can see maybe it's a little dark right there, but that's where our 20 amp outlet is for our air conditioner. Now, our air conditioner does not have a heating element in it. Some air conditioners will have like a little electric, um, I don't know, heating element. 
where you can get some supplemental heat out of, but this is just solely an air conditioner. Now this is a carrier unit. You're gonna of course see a lot of like Dometic units and things of that nature. So they all look a little bit different in how they turn on, operate, things of that nature, but nevertheless, rooftop air conditioner, pretty self-explanatory. Now, <laughs> going along with on the roof, we of course have a rooftop vent fan. Um, ours opens up and if you'll see on the outside, the, um, I guess, I don't know, cover if you will, rotates up and out of the way. And it's just got some simple on and off switches. You can both pull air in or suck air out depending on your preference. If you want uh, you know, air moving in or if you're, maybe if you're taking a shower or something and you wanna pull that moisture out. So that is of course our air unit. Now, that's not it for our, um, I guess, roof area of our pop-up camper. We also have some speakers in our pop-up camper. We only have two, one on each end, so our pop-up's a little dated. On some newer models, you might find speakers on the exterior, you might find speakers in your walls, but nevertheless, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, self right? These guys look like, like speakers, act like speakers. They are speakers. Um, only other thing we really have going on is of course a smoke and carbon monoxide detector. Once again, self-explanatory, but very crucial safety feature. If of course you're running propane, um, shoot, if you have campfires going on, anything like that, good safety feature to make sure is operable and working. But as far as the roof is concerned, all we really have left are the lights. Once again, self-explanatory, but I wanna take you outside and show you something that is critical for the operation of the lights in our pop-up camper, as well as many other pop-ups. So this right here at the base of our roof is a disconnect switch for our 12 volt lighting system. So what happens with that disconnect up there, if the roof's up, the lights will work, which makes sense, right? You want your lights to work when your pop-up is up. Now, when it comes down, this gets pressed up and that creates a disconnect, which of course will shut off the lights. And let's go back inside the pop-up and I'll explain why that's important. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where your rooftop lights are not working and you've troubleshooted everything else, it might be that disconnect switch for those uh, lights. Now, if your pop-up campers like ours, there might be that disconnect switch located kind of on the exterior or along the bottom side of that roof, but there are a, a couple other spots where it's pretty common. So let me just kind of point out where that would be in our pop-up camper. So just in case you can look there if you can't locate your uh, disconnect switch. So for example, on our uh, previous StarCraft, our StarCraft uh, 2409, we actually had like a flip up sink that, or, or a flip up uh, um, stove rather, that popped down right here, was hinged over here, and then flipped up all the way where our sink is right now. And where the disconnect switch was, it was a nice metal switch, it was located right here so that when that stove flipped down, of course, it would um, push down the switch, thereby allowing you to use your rooftop lighting. Now, on a previous Jayco, on our first Jayco actually, there was a switch, and th this is a little different because of course we have a slide out here, but it was a little different in the sense that there was a switch located um, behind the seat back. So once the seat back flipped up, the disconnect switch was then pressed down, and then once again, your rooftop lights uh, would work. So the idea being that if your bench is down, your lights will cut off because then presumably you're not camping. Same thing with the sink. If the sink is flipped down, once again, presumably you're not camping and therefore don't need the lights. So just look for things that you might flip up or move that when you're setting up might um, trigger that switch. So very important if your rooftop lights are not flipping on when they otherwise should be. All right guys, so now that we've gone over everything on the roof, really the next thing is essentially, these are valences and all these really do is they kind of cover up ugly wires and things of that nature. So they do have a bit of a function, but otherwise they're kind of just cosmetic. Now, speaking of the valences, we are essentially kind of in the middle of a renovation for our pop-up here. 
and those are going to be some of the next things that we do in addition to the curtains here but like if you haven't been following along on our rev on our renovation we of course uh redid all of our um cabinets we redid the flooring um oh of course the countertops we have this nice um marble look countertops and then most recently we just redid um all four of our cushions so everything's turning out great so far we just have the curtains and the valences to do. So if you're looking for a cool renovation to project to follow along on, definitely check that out. But moving on from valences and curtains, um, next up, and we have three of them, and these are called shepherd's hooks. So essentially all those do, of course, are keep your bunk ends nice and taut. And as you might be able to see right here, they are adjustable so if you ever find that your canopy above your uh, bunk end is not taut they do adjust out so just keep that in mind but moving on down from the shepherd's hooks of course you have your canvas pretty self-explanatory once again so with all that being said let's uh move on to some of the more technical aspects that we might find uh you know countertop level or below so as we enter into our pop-up we have a couple things going on right here first and foremost we have our light switches which are our overhead lights and then we actually also have these ground um, lights they're just nice little one watt lights that you can have on you know at night if you need to see or something like that now to the right of that our pop-up actually came with a battery voltage meter so as you can see our uh, battery is reading pretty healthy there at 13.5 volts it is being charged by the converter which we'll get into later of course uh fire extinguisher so if you're missing the fire extinguisher and you have something that looks kind of like this guy right here that's where a little fire extinguisher will go and then moving right on down this is another crucial um safety feature that you're you should have in your pop-up camper and actually these do expire so every five years you should replace um, the the propane alarm here now this is once again crucial if you're going to be running propane in or around your pop-up and essentially it's just a propane sensor I do see a lot of questions commonly about these these do consistently draw power as you can see lights on it's always on and it will drain your battery if you're not um, actively maintaining your battery or if you're not actively plugged in so if you do have a battery and this starts chirping um, it may be because you have a low battery so just a little tip there about your uh, propane alarm all right next up we have a toilet and shower combo toilet if you will I don't know once again self-explanatory we of course have whole videos just on our cassette toilet as well as the shower which is in our you know everything you need to know about uh, your water system video but short uh, toilet sh toilet shower combo i don't know whatever you want to call it that's all that is now moving on of course we have some outlets and here actually is our um, radio that goes with the speakers up there so this thing i actually uh, took out the really bulky cd player unit and replaced it with a simple 12 volt um, uh, Bluetooth radio. So as you heard it, it powered on there. Um, and, and technically it is not a radio. It's just a Bluetooth uh, receiver, but you can also do aux in, but this is all custom. And um, so you're probably not gonna see something like that, this in a pop-up. Now, if you watched our exterior um, video, this is the other half of that coax um, that runs from the outside. So you can, of course, put an antenna on the exterior. There's a simple run of coax cable that runs right here. And then, of course, you can plug in, uh, you know, a TV. You run a coax from here to, like, a TV or something if you want to pull some antenna in. Moving right along, this right here is going to be your furnace. So don't put anything r immediately next to this because, of course, if you're running your furnace, it does get hot. So this is where your furnace is going to blow into your pop-up which is why we sleep on this end of the pop-up because it's right next to that uh, furnace air and stays nice and toasty over here this is, of course is our slide out dinette pretty self-explanatory got some storage underneath there 
And to the left of our dinette, we have a Norcold refrigerator. And this is of course a three-way refrigerator. It may or may not look like the one you have. They come in all shapes and sizes. And well, really not shapes, they're all pretty rectangular, but they come in all different you know, sizes and manufacturers. So um, this one's a little on the larger side, but of course it does have a built-in freezer. And you know, as far as the control, because it is a three-way, you can power it three different ways. So of course ours is off right now, but it can also run on propane. Um, it can run on shore power or 120 volt and if you're just um if you pre-cool it let's say at your house if you pre-chill it on let's say 120 volt and then you want to keep it cold while you're traveling to your campsite you can switch it over to 12 volt but that is not to be used you know if you're actively camping um, as it will drain your battery very quickly but if your battery is being um, constantly recharged by your tow vehicle if you have a seven pin connector uh, that 12 volts a good option to maintain it then of course this is just simply how cold you want it to be um, I've never really tested this I've always kept it at uh, 5 and then over here is for uh, lighting the propane side so this right here is going to be the converter not to be confused with an inverter so what this does is it takes the 120 volt coming in via shore power and converts it down to 12 volt for a lot of the you know 12 volt systems in your pop-up so over here of course you have um, your circuit breakers so we have our main 30 amp circuit breaker a couple of 15s for a lot of the electronics and then the 20 which is of course for um, our 20 amp plug for our air conditioner now on the other side of the house we have our fuses uh, uh, and this is the 12 volt side of the house we have our fuses that of course protect a lot of your 12 volt electronics so um, you might be wondering what is all this tape down here I like to keep um, spare fuses taped right here that way of course if uh, we blow a fuse over there I'm able to get one in there pretty quick now just above our converter we actually have a GFCI um, outlet so all of the outlets in the pop-up including the one right there and then the two others and the one on the exterior are all um, down line of this GFCI. So for example, if this um, GFCI trips, if we want to test it right there, that's going to actually cut power. And as you can see, our lights over here turned off. So if you ever find that, you know, hey, my outlet should be working, I'm plugged into shore power, um, there's not a problem with the converter, check that GFCI, reset it, and um, your outlets downstream of it essentially should then um, be working again all right moving right along we of course have a microwave not too many pop-ups have microwaves uh, this is a high wall so kind of an uncommon feature unless of course you have a high wall we also have an oven in our pop-up camper uh, so we've uh, I'll admit we've never used our oven but uh, I suppose you could bake some cookies in there if you want or something but more importantly, we do have an interior three burner stove, which of course um, a lot more common in pop-ups. Maybe you have a two burner, maybe you have a carry out stove that you can also use outside, but just a pretty common and uh, self-explanatory um, three burner stove that runs on propane. This does not come out. It would be a pretty big unit to move out. So this does not uh, go outside like a lot of uh, um, propane stoves that you'll see in pop-ups do. Now to wrap things up, we have a sink. This is a double sink. Once again, commonly you might uh, only see a single uh, single pan sink, uh, but uh, we're fortunate enough to have two. And this does have hot and cold water. One thing that is very difficult to show, but we do have a water heater that's um, housed in the front storage area of our pop-up so of course uh, hot water for the sink hot water for the shower now speaking of the sink if we're not on city water we also have a 12 volt pump right here so the 12 volt pump for us is located right back and they're kind of hard to see tucked behind uh, one of our storage containers but we do have a 12 volt pump in case we're not connected to city water so if we fill up our uh, um, fresh water holding tank 
we can use that water pump to pressurize our sinks and our showers sink and showers I should say so that is very handy now in addition um, or I should say as well as the um, water pump switch uh, right next to it we have our furnace controls so propane isn't on right now but if it was I would just uh, flip this to on and then I would set uh, set uh, whatever heat I want now it is gonna try and light over there um, it's gonna try and light over there because uh, I turn it on but it's not gonna light because it's not it's gonna sense that there's no propane coming in but you can hear the uh, blower uh, and actually see it blowing over there <laughs> um, yeah with uh, when I flip that on so now if I turn that off it'll take a second but it'll eventually turn off so now that our furnace fl uh, fan stopped blowing that is the interior of our pop-up camper in a nutshell. Now, keep in mind, of course, all pop-up campers are going to be slightly different depending on the year, the make, the model, what features it all came with standard versus optional, things of that nature. But in the general sense, they're almost like 90% the same. There's just those few few variations on where they put things and maybe what they used uh, from year to year. But Hopefully you guys can take this for what it's worth. Maybe you got a few tips and tricks for some, some things on the inside of your pop-up camper, or perhaps this video answered some of the questions on what exactly are this thing, <laughs> like the 12 volt um, you know, auxiliary plugs there. So hopefully you guys learned something and, and or enjoyed the video. And as always guys, hopefully we see you in the next video. If not, hopefully we see you out there camping.